Hello, the stool from Rob is still there. That's fine. I wasn't going to sit on a stool. It's not a really chilled out performance from me. Uh, good. How are we all doing? Yes. Fine, fine is the answer to that. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about lads holidays. Give me a cheer if you've been on a lads holiday before. Yes. Mainly lads, to be expected. Uh, that's fine. Uh, if you've not been on a lads holiday, uh, don't. They're awful. Uh, I've been on one. I've done my research. Uh, it was the worst week of my life. Uh, quite a posh group of lads I went with. Quite a po about 30 of us on this holiday. To give you an idea of quite how posh they were as a group of people. Uh, 30 of us on this holiday, three Ruperts. Now that <laughs> is a density of Rupert you very rarely see outside of a Durham University Cayley. That is pretty incredible. I'm a little bit posh. You'll probably be able to hear that in my voice. I'm a little bit posh, uh, but I like to think I'm a little bit street as well. Uh, I'm a little bit, yeah, laughing at that openly. That's fine. But people listening at home can't see me, so I'm trying to get away with, you know, it's Radio 1. I'm a little bit hip-hop. You know, I'm a little bit posh, a little bit hip-hop. Uh, I do a drive-by shooting, uh, but on a pheasant. Uh, I wouldn't pop a cap in a man's ass but I would doff a cap to a man's wife. <laughs> and guys, don't worry about messing with my homies. I'm not going to get annoyed. But if you cut the nose off the brie, you fuckers are going down. So uh, steer clear. So this is quite a large, posh group of people I'm going away with. Nice enough people, uh, but get a drink inside them. They turn into braying morons. Uh, now, first night we were there, we all went out clubbing, uh, and one of them got in a fight because he'd had a few too many beers. He got in a fight, the bouncer collared him, decided I'm throwing out every single person from this group. We don't want any trouble from any members of the group. So this rumour got round and we all scattered to different sides of the club thinking we can evade, we can escape being thrown out by the bouncer. They'll never find us. Forgetting, of course, that we were on a lad's holiday, which means we were wearing matching numbered T-shirts <laughs> with amusing laddish nicknames on the back. So all they had to do was pick us off one by one. Number 10, fuck machine, out the door. <laughs> Number 17, les Gisarable, goodbye. <laughs> Number 20, Simon, off. You know, nice guy, not very imaginative. Uh, the only person left was my friend Anthony, who thought, I can escape this. They're looking for the T-shirt. What I'll do is take my T-shirt off. Turns out the best way to blend in in a nightclub is not to go completely topless because bouncers can smell male nipples. That's how, uh, that's how they operate. Now, that was not the worst night of the holiday. The worst night of the holiday I will tell you about now. I mean, I found this quite funny, but, uh, but it ended the holiday on quite the sour note. Uh, we went out on a bar crawl. Uh, the ringleader of the group uh, announced, right, lads, final night, we're going on a bar crawl. Uh, now, let's hop in the elevator of misery in the skyscraper of sadness and go up to the first floor because I hate bar crawls. Uh, the way I drink, I like to go to the nearest pub to my house sit in that pub until I feel sad, and then I go home. He said, it's going to be a fancy dress bar crawl. Ting, second floor. I hate fancy dress. That spoiled what was already going to be a horrible evening out for me. He said, it's going to be a comic book themed fancy dress bar crawl. Ting, back down to the first floor. I like comic books. Now, <laughs> as soon as this was announced, my friend Anthony from the story before, comic book themed fancy dress bar crawl, he said, I'll be Catwoman, as if anyone was going to try and get in there before him. <laughs> He said, I'll be Catwoman. He was excited. He was giddy. He said, you have that, mate. You be Catwoman. Because he planned a costume. He knew this was going to happen, and he would planned a costume. He was genuinely excited. And it was a good costume. I'll take you through it. It was a particularly good costume, because he'd taken into account the climate in Tenerife at that particular time of year. What he was wearing for his Catwoman costume, he was wearing shoes, because uh, he's not a maniac. There might have been broken glass on the floor. He's a sensible lad, brought up well. He was wearing little black trunks, cat ears and a cat tail, and to get the effect of Catwoman's PVC bodysuit, he covered himself head to toe in black body paint. Great costume, genuinely looked like Catwoman. <laughs> Great costume, we all thought, until halfway between the first and second bar of the bar crawl, when Anthony lost his ears and tail. <laughs> Some of you now visualizing what he must have looked like on the Tenerife bar crawl, to all intents and purposes, fully blacked up head to toe. The most amazing thing about this being is he hadn't realised that he'd lost his ears and tail, so he was still strutting around with all the confidence of a man still dressed as Catwoman. He'd been boogieing in the first bar, people were high-fiving him, going, hey, it's Catwoman, nice one, Catwoman. He was full of beans, strutting to the next bar, lost his ears and tail, no idea. We got to the second club, just as Crazy and Love dropped in, he kicked open the door and screamed, it's Beyonce, you fuckers! Like the most inappropriate stars in their eyes entrance you have ever seen. 
Now, we realised ages ago that he'd lost his ears and tail. Me and Rupert, too, were stood at the bar pissing ourselves <laughs> laughing. But he had no idea. He was running round. He couldn't believe how many people were staring at him, grinding away, <laughs> running round, stealing people's drinks, going, I'm a robber, I'm a robber, because Catwoman is a robber. <laughs> but out of context, that sounded wrong. At some point, he realised that he'd gone from American comic book character to 1930s American comic book character. He went to the toilet, he saw himself in the mirror. He was horrified. If he could have gone pale, he would have done. <laughs> he came storming out of that toilet. He came straight up to me, the most miserable looking hellboy you've ever seen at this point. Just me sat at the bar, face painted pink because they'd run out of red, with two little toilet roll tubes stuck to the front of my head. He said, Ed, we're leaving right now. I said, that's absolutely fine. We're leaving. I've had it with this holiday. I've had it with most of these people. But we couldn't get a cab home. Once the cab saw the state of him, all the for hire lights went off. <laughs> all the way down. They obviously thought, well, we need the fare, but I'm not getting involved in that political minefield. This is the most tragic end I've ever spent to any evening in a Tenerife car park at three o'clock in the morning, spraying my friend down with fizzy, fizzy mineral water. <laughs> what must that have looked like to a passerby? <laughs> Strolling by going, what the fuck is going on there? <laughs> that must have looked like a BNP budget reenactment of Lewis Hamilton winning a Grand Prix. <laughs> Now that's the end of my lad's holiday. So if you're planning on going one, uh, going on one, uh, do beware. You may be uh, accidentally racist. Um, thank you very much, Obi Gamble. Good night.